Okay. <clears throat> Today we're going to try to make a uh, a dual band 2 meter, 70 centimeter antenna. I'm going to use the plans from uh, the website. And uh, this is the website here. So, yeah, I'm going to make some modifications as we go. So, it's going to be an experiment for all of us just to check it out. What we're going to make is on the right hand side. It's a uh, 146 440 antenna. And we're going to use copper pipe um, and some other, other odds and ends that I have to have around the house. Uh, the plans call for a coupling nut right here, but I don't have that. Um, and I don't have the aluminum rods either that, that the plans call for. But I do have half inch copper pipe and I also have uh, a dielectric insulator. So this is the dielectric insulator here. It's a half inch diameter dielectric. Uh, basically what it does, this is used for water heaters, separate copper from steel to prevent a, uh, a galvanic corrosion action. And what it is, there's a brass half inch diameter fitting in the center. You see it's a steel nut, an insulator that goes over top of the brass fitting, like this. And a washer, and the back nut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach an SO259 connector inside. And so we're going to connect the antenna to. Basically it's going to go in like this. You can see it doesn't fit right now. And the nut then is going to go to the top. You can see it doesn't fit right now. So we're going to make some little modifications to this to make it fit. And then with the nut. This is going to be driving the, uh, the element. I want to drill out the center hole to 29, 30 seconds, or just under 3 quarters of an inch diameter. Once that's done, the uh, connector Fit right inside of it. Actually, the connector with the Bill 259 will fit totally inside, just like that. Next thing I want to do is uh, draw a clearance because this uh, we don't want this to spin as we tighten it up. So basically, what we've got going on is. This is the nut, and this is going to be the inside connector. And it's actually going to slide down in here, and I'm going to make two anti-rotation spots. And I'm going to start drilling with an eighth inch diameter bit first, just to get some clearance going. Okay, once I got the holes drilled, I'm going to change my bit diameter. I'm sorry, 3 16ths of an inch drill bit. And I'm going to drill up to the pilot holes and clean out that, uh, those threads. Okay, finagling, filing, and fitting in those grooves there. What you're going to do is put the dielectric, the brass piece back in again. So you have your insulator, the brass piece goes in first. Next, you have your connector that fits 
right in between there and there, and then your back nut then slides over the top. So now you've got your connector. You can see the inside is not touching the inside of the brass. And they got the center connector that you installed yet, but that's that's now your connector you have for the base. Okay, I want to set the nut and I'm taking and file off the galvanic material all the way to the solder will not stick. Get some tin tinning flux. And go ahead and spread tin flux on the side of the nut. Okay, once you have that tinned, take your torch, and some solder, and heat up the edge of the nut. And you just want to put some solder on there and get it tinned. And let it cool. Out here. It's got a nice flat spot. It's like that. Okay. According to the print, this is from the center there to the next element is one and seven sixteenths of an inch. So it just so happens when I measure this up, I took obviously took the center element out, but the distance from there to here is one and seven sixteenths. It's pretty close. So I have to file down the this the uh, copper fitting just a little bit. Okay, so I have a piece of copper in the vise. Very carefully you don't want to cut too tight because you'll take and you'll bend the copper and the helmets will not fit in there. So very carefully fall down one end. Okay, after we got the piece of fitting trimmed, I have these two pipes in there just for alignment purposes, the scraps. Uh, and center to center is one and seven sixteenths, which is right on the money. That's what we want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, the spot where you have solder on it. That's the spot we tinned earlier. And we're going to clamp it together. Okay, I took the insides out. We know that measurement from here to here. The center line measurements are one and seven sixteenths, which is what the print calls for. So I'm going to heat up our copper. Okay, let it cool down. One of the key things to remember when we're working with copper and soldering, extremely clean. So for now I'm just going to clean off one end both inside and the outside. 
if you don't have a handy dandy little wire brush like this, you can always use sandpaper too. And should be very, very shiny inside and out. Here you see the end of the transmitting antenna. That's the transmitting element. And uh, what I do is I drilled a eighth diameter hole through the brass fittings and through the end of the PSO239 connector. And I attach this piece of solid copper uh, lead, the uh, copper I got from a 14-gauge uh, Romex equipment ground wire and solder that in to both sides. Okay, here's the finished product. The SO259 is screwed in. I'm sure the PL259 is screwed in here. This is a dielectric connector. One and a half inch copper T, one half inch copper elbow. The uh, elements are cut to the print, soldered in. So here's the finished product. I got it stuck up in my attic right now. It's all connected up, ready to go. This is just a check of the SWR at 146.9400 megahertz. And this is the SWR at 443.200 megahertz in the other band. I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching and have a great day.